we are asked to simplify the given square roots. Notice in each case the radicand, or the number under the square root is negative, which means we will need to use imaginary numbers in order to simplify these square roots. An imaginary number is a real number multiplied by the imaginary unit i, where i is equal to the square root of negative one. So looking at the first example, we have the square root of negative 25. Because the radicand is negative for the first step, let's write this as the square root of negative one times 25. And now from here, we'll use the product property of square roots shown here, and write this as the square root of negative one times the square root of 25. And now we simplify each square root. By definition, the square root of negative one is equal to i. The square root of 25 simplifies perfectly to five because five times five or five squared equals 25. To show some work, let's write this as the square root of negative one times the square root of five squared. Simplifying, the square root of negative one simplifies perfectly to i, so we have i times the square root of five squared simplifies perfectly to one factor of five. i times five equals five i. The square root of negative 25 simplifies perfectly to the imaginary number five i. Next we have the square root of negative 12. For the first step, because the radicand is negative, let's write this as the square root of negative one times 12 which equals the square root of negative one times the square root of 12. And now we simplify. Let's write out the prime factorization of 12. So we have the square root of negative one times the square root of two times two times three. Notice how this shows 12 contains the perfect square factor of two times two or two squared, and therefore this will simplify. Let's write this as the square root of negative one times the square root of two squared times three. Now we simplify. The square root of negative one equals i, and the square root of two squared is equal to one factor of two. We have i times two square root three, which can be written as two square root three i or sometimes we'll see it as two i square root of three. We need to be careful if we have the i on the end to make sure it's not under the square root. And that's why sometimes we see the i before the square root. Looking at our last example, we have negative square root negative 84, or if we want the opposite of the square root of negative 84. Let's write this as negative or the opposite of the square root of negative one times 48, which is equal to negative or the opposite of the square root of negative one times the square root of 48. And now we simplify both square roots. 48 is equal to 16 times three, and 16 is a perfect square. Let's write this as negative square root negative one times the square root of 16 times three. 16 equals four squared. Let's write this as negative square root negative one times the square root of four squared times three. If we didn't recognize 16 was a perfect square factor of 48, we could write out the prime factorization of 48 and get the same result. Now simplifying, the square root of negative one is equal to i. So we have negative i times the square root of four squared simplifies to one factor of four, giving us four times square root of three. And again, this can be written as negative four square root three i, or negative four i square root of three. I hope you found this helpful.